Well, today is Saturday, April 9, about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. You can see the Catalina Mountains ahead of us there, and then there's this wonderful mall to cross from our favorite. We just drove up North Campbell, which is one of those fences, to come and see somebody's art who we could have seen by walking three blocks from our own home in John Day, Oregon. Come here to see if there's a display of Ken Randless's art. And I'm not sure if that's the case or not because the name of this fine art center. There is the Wiedermeyer Gallery, and there is the Jane Hamilton Fine Art. And we believe that this is where Kim wonderful paintings in metal and also in other media are located. So we'll go on in and find out. Well, as it turns out, there are several art galleries located right here at the northern end of North Campbell in Tucson. And we are going to cross the street and head to another gallery. Well, we, call it. we originated our quest to find the art gallery. Diagonally right across the street. And as we sweep the terrain a little bit, once again, see the beautiful mountains, Capitals. And immediately on arrival, Vanessa Love. Assuming this is the entrance to the gallery. And like many structures here up Campbell Avenue, the architecture is just beautiful. Stucco based architecture. The gallery here by the name of Sanders. And I don't believe it's in Sanders. Let's see, there's another here. And second, Sunders West. Find wooden door to enter, find out. As we sweep around, potentially a third gallery. for fine art. This rings, because I do believe that Kim mentioned it for fine art. And I'm walking into the main lobby at this point, and you can see an awful lot of Native American and cowboy-like art here, which doesn't surprise us because we know that Kim loves painting indigenous artwork since she has some lineage that, it, that is of that line. So as I sweep around, I'm not seeing anything that reminds me of Kim's art, but we're gonna talk to this fine lady here who is gonna show us where it's at. And you are? I am Jerdy Sterling. Jerdy Sterling. Yes. Can um, you tell us a little bit about you, this particular gallery before? This particular gallery, there is, are three galleries. There is one in Big Fork, Montana, Whitefish, Montana, and Tucson. Um, Kim has got her nature, particularly her bird uh, photography or artwork in here. Uh -huh. um, she does some very interesting mediums. I personally really like the, what she's done on the copper. Oh yes, we've seen some beautiful uh, um, examples of that at her art gallery in, in John Day. Okay. And as I understand it, she also did 
some uh, displayed some artwork in was it Whitefish, Montana? Yes. So that's in the un, other gallery, one that, of our other galleries. Now I understand the connection why her artwork is now here in Tucson. We have a home in John Day and a, a condo here in Tucson. We okay. just happened to be visiting the area and we wanted to see you know this. how to live life that's for darn sure. <laughs> we are not snowbirds though. No. I recognize this painting. There we go. Oh, she does such a yes. fabulous job with birds. Look at the textures in that. These guys look hungry. Untested wings. Kim Randless, oil and gold leaf. And another one. That looks like a bird of prey. Yes. As well as this one. One, two, three, four. Wow. And then this, okay, the buffalo as well, bison. Oh, I noticed Kim has a very distinctive mark that she puts on her painting. It's, a, it's an arrow with her first letter of her name on it. Are there, are there, is there anything that you this know is, about this? This is what I know of Kim's. Okay. Um, Other artwork here. And I think that is. So she only has a few paintings here on display. Only a few paintings here in our in this gallery in Tucson. How long are they going to be here for? Do you think? Um, I would imagine probably through the summer. Through the summer. I think. Okay. I don't know that for sure. I noticed they are for sale. Yes, they, they are. They are for outstanding sale. pieces of art. They are. And I'm sure she put many hours into their <laughs> execution. They did. Um, we, here in the Tucson location, we do a first Monday, or excuse me, a first Thursday art walk uh -huh. in collaboration with the three galleries here and three galleries across the street. You know, we discovered the ones across the street because we thought originally that's where mm -hmm. it was. So with that exposure uh, for the first Thursday art walks, we have gotten a lot of people and a lot of great exposure for all of the galleries. Well, first off, I must say the architecture in this entire area of North Campbell is just exquisite. <laughs> it really is. It's it very really, fun. And then, of course, I can see why nested right up against the mountain, Catalinas. the Catalina Mountains would also be a wonderful area. Oh, yeah. And then, of course, the mall over there, La yes. Encandada, has a lot to recommend it because it's kind of an open air mall and you can wander well, through it. It's a very it. nice mall. It is a it's very, very nice high mall. end. So, this is a very magnetic area, I would think, mm -hmm. of Tucson. It is. And because of the six galleries sitting mm -hmm. here together, that is really a big perk for everybody. All of the galleries seem to have carry different types of artwork, so it's not as if oh, you're in... They're not competing, competing in any way. At oh. all. No. So I take it you pretty much feature paintings here. At oh, this particular... We a, uh, yes, we have a lot of different things. Sure. Um, I couldn't believe our uh, turquoise and silver jewelry is such a yet. Oh, sure. Such a hit. Do you get a lot of it out of Mexico? Because uh, I don't know for sure if I can tell you and speak to where, where it all originate? comes from. Uh -huh. um, you know. <laughs> now I'm going to ask you a personal question because I'm a jazz pianist. Mm -hmm. Do any of the galleries have a nice grand piano in them so you, somebody like myself could come and sit down and play we for a couple hours? We do have a gentleman that comes and plays a guitar, but I don't know of a grand piano in any of these galleries, sadly. But that would be a That would be cool very part. nice. Cause. That would be a very cool But part. that's an aside. Is there any other particular artwork that appeals to you that you'd like to show? I know Kim's is very, very attractive, but this video is also wants to be about the general sure. experience um, here. Sure. My art taste runs a little more uh, modern, mm -hmm. so I personally absolutely love Amy Lay's. Oh, that's a very dynamic presentation the of the bison. It is very dynamic. Yes, it is. Um, and uh, all of her works, they're, they're a little more contemporary and a little mo more modern. Right. Well, you know, the thing that always impressed me about Kim's is her realism is just stupendous. Yes. And it has so much texture 
in the surfaces in and dimensionality. Yes, yeah, yeah. quite extraordinary. That hawk is just absolutely outstanding. Oh, absolutely. Look at the hay. Even the hay is just well executed. I, I notice you also have some sculpts. Uh-huh. <laughs> This, this guy, this bronze, the cougar, mm -hmm. I, I, I really like that one. You There's know, a number of sculptures in here that... <laughs> well, have you ever seen a real puma? Mm -hmm. They are the most extraordinary creatures. <laughs> we were up on the, um, Highway 191 in the mountains, mm -hmm. white mountain areas. Mm -hmm and one streaked across the road in front of us. It was the most magnificently moving creature I had ever seen in my life. Its legs both were completely horizontal, and it must have been running at least 50 miles an hour. Just I live on, uh, in La Reserve, mm -hmm. in northwest Tucson. Okay. And I live backed up to the mountain there. Sure. And so, you I see the wildlife. Oh, you got it. I was sitting at my desk, um, about a month ago. Mm -hmm. I looked up the window, the bobcats just walking right by my yard. Mm -hmm. We live in John Day, and we, I, I, I am sure that there was a mountain lion that went right through our yard and roared in the middle of the night. It's spectacular. Yeah, we have deer all the time. The thing oh, you have yeah. to watch out for are them rutting males. Oh, absolutely. They'll move into your backyard. Yeah. <laughs> they can be pretty aggressive. I have a smaller dog, about a 30 pounder, so I don't even let her out without me being there. Oh, sure. Coyotes. And cats. All of those guys, yeah. Sure. Okay, I'm putting her on the spot now. I'm asking now whether or not we've got any art that you feel is particularly iconic of the Sonora Desert. In How the about the prickly pears? The prickly pears. <laughs> you know, the purple, the purple prickly, prickly pears, to me, mm -hmm. that's quite iconic. Yes, they um, are. Then, and I mean, this is... Now that certainly isn't right there. <laughs> That's no. Africa. Oh yes, there you go. That is. Uh -huh. um, he Are these... painted that specifically. It was it? Is... We come here. Okay. Uh, he being was he a, a indigenous artist? His name is Aaron Hazel. He's a biracial uh, oh, okay. gentleman. He lives in Boise. Uh, spent a lot of time in Seattle. Uh huh. Um, and he's got such an incredible. Uh, style because he uses a palette knife sure. to get the texture. Right. Uh, but he specifically painted this one I see. to come down here. I don't know if it, I mean, it's not real realistic, but it is. So no, well, I mean, uh, art is basically something that creates a response in a person. And to me, I mean. Oh yeah. <laughs> this is this is the terrain. Yes, that is very much the terrain. What I'm not seeing in here is Saguaro, so I would say this is further north. It probably like on is. the way to Globe or somewhere out there. Probably is. Of, uh, of course, this, here's a Saguaro. Yes. And you know our favorite joke about Saguaro is they're very friendly, but don't hug them. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and have you? Are there ranches? I don't know that this I've is seen probably. Cattle ranches. Well, right? there he is. Actually, there are, there are cattle ranches. Um, um, north between uh, in Oracle, there's some cattle ranches. Oracle, yes, yes, yes. We've camped actually at Pepper Sauce. Uh huh. I just went area. up there with uh, some friends of mine, and uh -huh. they had a jeep, and we went up the the drive creek there's a, bread. There's a dirt road that just runs all the way through right. the mountains up there. Now this is a pretty common scene. Some guy trying to pick up on a blonde. Okay, well you can find that just about anywhere. anywhere. But it does have a southwestern feel to it. Now. What about cranes and other kinds of water birds? We've been to Lake Patagonia, but I don't know if I've seen anything that large at Lake Patagonia. You know, and I don't know. I'm newer to the Tucson area, okay. too, so um, I don't know exactly if there are cranes down at Patagonia or not, or anywhere within, let's say, a 50-mile circumference. Looks like we have a bit of an edible here. Yeah. Oh, we have a question for you. Are you familiar with the fact that this is considered a World Heritage Site for gastronomy? That food here is registered with no, the United Nations? No, I did Nation? not know that. Yes. UNESCO. UNESCO, UNESCO World Heritage. It is Heritage a UNESCO Center. World Heritage for, for gastronomic. gastronomic. It's the only one in North America. Really? Yes. Oh, I love that. I'll tell my house <laughs> yes. I'll tell my house Yeah, yes. that's a distinction. 
You notice know, this really nice teepee, and I, what I love about it is how illuminated it is. It's really Between the sun setting, I would assume. I assume it's sun setting. And somehow there might be a campfire in there because they do have fires in them and then the smoke mm -hmm. rises out. I like that luminous effect. What do you know of this particular artist? I don't know a lot about Mark. Um, I believe he, uh, certainly he's a Western artist, but I don't know a lot about him and we don't have a lot of his works. The next thing I'm noticing is this looks like the Sabino. It does look like Sabino. And Sabino is, is an absolute, it's one of the, it's one of the only year round streams that flow in this area and it's right down at the end of this. Right. Sunrise Boulevard that we're, we're standing at the corner of right now. It just is called Desert uh, Blue. Uh-huh. Oh, that's the name of it. That's very nicely done. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, the most interesting one for me is the portrait of Chief Joseph. Ah, <laughs> and we've been there to the town of Joseph. Beautiful town in oh, North Oregon. There's Eastern a town called Oregon. Joseph. There we found out that it was named after Chief Joseph. Oh, there you go. And do you know this artist here? Any I don't. I really do not. Charles Craig. Craig. If, if you want artist information, if you go into our website, uh -huh. there's bios on all of them. Tell you what, could you tell us the how to find your website? Absolutely. Uh, go ahead and, and, and say it on, for the camera, too. Okay, so um, our website is forfineart.com. Forfineart.com, and you're located in three locations. One's Montana, one's here. Two Montana. Two in Montana. Whitefish, Montana, Big Fork, and Tucson. And Tucson. Now, the interesting question to make is, how did those three locations get selected? <laughs> well, the founder, um, Derek Vandenberg, was the founder of this, and he ended up in Montana and started out with a fra uh, picture framing business. And from there, it just kind of morphed. So mm. it was late 90s when he started. Did he it. become a snowbird? Is that how he ended up with a Tucson I don't Tucson know for connection? sure how he ended up in Montana. He's um, an outdoorsman, of course, and uh -huh. he is uh, very much a bicyclist. So oh. um, that part of the country drew him there. Mm -hmm. um, and he's, like I said, he started as a frame, with a picture framing business, and then it just kind of morphed into one gallery, and then another, and then another. We've actually swam in the, in the Whitefish River in Whitefish. <laughs> we have traveled all over North America ourselves. Oh, well, and that, isn't that a pleasure to be able to do that? It is a pleasure. The gentleman that does this, his name is Dennis Johnson, and he lives part of the year in Palm Springs, California, and the other part of the year in Montana. Mm -hmm. And he has since retired just a couple of years ago. Uh, he was a graphics arts instructor mm -hmm. and at, a, at a university in California. Okay. And the ironic thing is, is I worked at the same university that he did. And I moved here a little over a year ago. And here he was a featured artist a couple of months ago. So I walked in and I said, well, Hi, Dennis. And he's like, what are you what? doing? <laughs> he recognized you and you were. Well, we do have a special place for Tucson in our hearts. Oh, I love it's, Tucson. It is, there's a nice vibratory quality to the, to the city. Well, and, it, and it doesn't feel like a big city, even though there's a million people living here. It, to me, Tucson I love because it's big enough that it offers all the things culturally that speak to me. Right. Which things like this. Um, I like the, the terrain. I like the fact that it's, when it's 120 in Phoenix, it's maybe 108 here, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is still warm, sure. but, you know. So what did you do at, what was this university you were uh, at? It was California State University. Oh, CSU where? In uh, Palm Desert, actually. It Palm was Desert, so you, smaller. you actually desert. upgraded by coming here. Palm Desert is pretty desolate compared to the Sonora Desert. Well, it really is. In terms is. of plant life. And it things. is, it really is. And, and the, that area sits at sea level, so of course it's quite a yeah, bit warmer. Yeah, six degrees cooler, I mean warmer, yeah. Yeah, um, but you know, I loved my time in California, but Tucson was always the place where I was gonna retire. Well, you know, there's only one Tucson on <laughs> right. the entire planet. <laughs> That's right. That's right. 
Well, you're uh, once again, Jerdy. 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 Not Jordy. No. Jordy. You weren't on the Enterprise. No. Jerdy. Jordy. And Jerdy, so you've been working here for about, what, a year, you said? I know. I've been in the desert for a little over a year. I've only been working here about a month. About a month. <laughs> yes. Well, you know what? You've picked up an awful lot. I guess the last thing to look at is you did mention uh, jewelry, <laughs> hand fashioned jewelry. Just because it's such a hot commodity. Yeah, that's, it's the kind of thing, you know, we even went to the uh, Lowell Observatory in mm -hmm. Flagstaff, and they had jewelry. Most of it was made out of meteoric material. <laughs> yeah, it's, it seems to be quite popular. It goes in and out of here very quickly. I also quickly. see you have some purses down there. Oh, yes. <laughs> so in exchange for a little bit of the load in your purse, you get to walk away with a new one, right? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's right. Okay, but we did want to revisit this this Chief Joseph painting. It was done in, if you can see it, 1906. So it must have been while Chief Joseph was still among the living. Now he's just living in a different place entirely. So Jerry is my given name. So there you go. Yeah. And that's where it came from. Wonderful I, work. Everybody asked, and I'm like, okay, it's not too long of a story. I'm so. taken with how the shadow continues behind the painting. It almost looks like a continuation. Um, so let, me, let me pull it up on the left side. Uh, let's see if it gives us any history. Let's see. So I don't know, Kim, if you had a chance to come down here and see. But here you go. This is what you got. Yes. Painting on, looks like metal background. Adios to fine art.